Hey everyone, I'm Rachel, I have hamsters, and today I'm gonna to talk about some hanging DIY boredom breaker treats that I made for my hamsters recently and how, <laughs> how I did it and why I did it. Um, so I'm gonna start by, I started making these uh, toilet paper roll treats for all my hamsters. It's basically just, you take a toilet paper roll, you roll it in um, a mixture of wet flour, and then you put that in their seed mixture or some treats, uh, whatever it is you wanna coat the um, toilet paper roll in and let them have fun with it. And I will say it was pretty fun. Like all my hamsters seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> Laverne was definitely the most fun to watch. Um, she literally got upside down <laughs> and, um, and really got in there. But I found that they were able to get the seeds off really quickly. Um, it seems like a boredom breaker that kind of only fulfilled them for a few minutes um, until they got all the seeds off and then it was like okay what's next <laughs> it almost felt too easy so then i started to think well how can i turn this into something that is a little bit more challenging um, that uh, will take a little bit longer for them to work on and can be something that they continue to come back to um, for you know a couple days not just like a few minutes <laughs> for one day So for the next round of boredom breakers, I actually made a different mix. Um, I used a bunch of different things, some puffs, uh, I used yeah, various different flavors of baby puffs. That one's the carrot beet one, the other one is spinach, um, spinach broccoli maybe. Uh, I mixed some millet in there, because <laughs> everybody loves millet. I just had to break it up a little bit, um, so, you know, because it comes in a, a whole spray form. Uh, what else did I put in there? Oh, I had lots of treats from Redwood Grove. Those are some dried veggies and some different mixes that I had gotten as part of my spoiled hamster box <laughs> recently. So I decided to include that in there and also some banana chips, which are really a fun special treat. Oh, and also some like little bits of chicken that I had left over um, from the bottom of the chicken, the freeze dried chicken bag. Um, so I just sprinkled that all in there and mixed it up. And then to start, um, I made a mixture. I used oat flour um, and I just, you wanna make kind of a thick, maybe not super thick, but thick enough that it can bind to the, uh, to the seeds or whatever it is you're using. Um, so that's a little bit watery there. Um, that probably won't hold anything. So you kind of have to play with it until you get that exact right consistency. And as you work with it, it does get a little drier. So you have to kind of, you gotta work fast or add water to it <laughs> as you go. Um, so those are my toilet paper rolls. And the challenge is here that now I bought these banana stands that you can see. Um, I got them from Target. They're just, I think it's made from bamboo. Um, I have dwarf hamsters, so they're not good climbers. I'm not worried about them messing with this. If you have a Syrian, this might not work for you. Um, you might, you could try hanging it from the top of your enclosure. But I would say in general, whenever you have anything that's hanging, um, your hamster might climb up it uh, and either try to escape or, you know, cause damage to themselves. So, you know, use your best judgment. My hamsters are not really great climbers um, and none of them have ever seemed interested in escaping. So. I wasn't really worried about that, um, and I I know their abilities. They they definitely can't climb up this. <laughs> um, probably the hardest part is getting that measurement right. So um, don't cut until you get that just about where you want it. And I was trying to get the toilet paper roll to be basically touching the base there because um, if it was too high, my little robo like Sophia wouldn't be able to reach it. And even my dwarf hamsters, I mean, they're just. They're not, <laughs> they're adorable, but they're clumsy little things. Um, so I, I, I wanted to make it challenging, but not like so challenging that it's frustrating and annoying. <laughs> uh, the, the string that I'm using is a hemp twine. Um, I would say it's probably, hemp is um, not really like something you want your hamster to digest. It's not specifically poisonous or anything for them, but it's not a fiber that's going to probably break down in their stomach, similar to using cotton fluff in, in their enclosures. You don't want them to ingest it. So just watch it. I mean, I don't think my hamsters can even reach that twine, but um, but if you see your hamster chewing on it, then you know, then you want to take it away. Um, so, you know, just kind of be aware. Some hamsters do that, some hamsters don't. Um, I found a spoon works well for coating the edges. 
and it gets a little messy in there, but um, your hands start to get really sticky. <laughs> um, good to do it on a kitchen counter. This was a little harder using this mix over a seed mix because I did find there were a lot of sort of like holes um, that were a little tricky to, fi to fill. Maybe next time I will also add in their seed mix, which is Higgins Sunburst. Um, but I just kind of used my fingers and tried to, to get that on there. And uh, after this was all over, I let it dry for about a day. I think that's how long it took because um, I didn't want them to interact with the wet flower if possible. I just felt like it could be sticky and not great. <laughs> it would just be messy and who knows. Um, so best to avoid that. All right, so now I'm gonna go on hyperspeed now and get the other five boredom breakers done. Um, I just happened to have five toilet rolls, uh, although at the time of making this video, I only had four hamsters. Um, I now have five. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to make them all and then I figured, I knew that Steven would probably finish his first so I could give him another one later. <laughs> he is a hungry and determined little guy. So I let Laverne be my first test subject, um, mostly because Laverne really loves and gets a lot of attention these days. And um, I was actually gonna be gone for a day. I, I drove down to the, the California Hamster Association show, which was super fun. Um, but I knew Laverne would miss me, so I decided to set up this boredom breaker for her and make sure that she had some activity uh, to do while I was gone. Um, and it was pretty successful. I watched some footage of her later and she um, seemed to have a lot of fun with it. The one thing I did notice is that that bamboo, um, the bamboo is actually pretty slippery. And you can see here, uh, she starts to slip and slide all around <laughs> trying to get those seeds off. Um, and so I did eventually make some modifications to it to ensure that she had some good grip um, it felt like a little unfair that it was both moving and also the floor was slippery. <laughs> Although really cute to watch her struggle, <laughs> get her little legs. Um, it just, I didn't want her to accidentally fall off the platform. I mean, she wouldn't be injured, but you know, I just, um, it felt like, like it was a little too hard <laughs> and at least she should have some solid footing. So here it is with the modifications. As you can see, I just added some of those nail file strips. Um, they're like sticky back nail file strips that I used in Laverne's enclosure also around the edges of her box. And that just helps um, her not slip around. I also figure it'll do some gentle nail filing um, so it, it can't hurt. Um, I do think, you know, you should be careful with this kind of thing. I don't want to cause any injury to her feet. Um, so just make sure your hamsters, if you do decide to use this, um, you know, check their feet, make sure they're not getting inflammation or anything. I think if you use a little bit of it, it's kind of like using rocks in your enclosure, like it's just a little bit of a textured surface, um, but you definitely don't want to use it everywhere um, because that would be just super hard on their feet. Um, but I am hoping that maybe it helps keep her nails a little bit more trim <laughs> because she is one of the harder hamsters to trim nails for. Uh, she is just so wiggly. So, um, and she also has one nail that I feel like it grows so fast. <laughs> like, stop growing. <laughs> um, so maybe this will make a difference. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but it did definitely help her um, be able to access the seeds on the board and breaker, even though it's still kind of a challenge. She's not like sliding all over the place.
Stephen, in true Stephen form, was terrified. <laughs> you can see he did everything he could to avoid it <laughs> at first. <laughs> um, Stephen does not do super well with change. Um, I simply moved his sand bath uh, like slightly so I could fit that banana stand in there and he really got scared. But eventually he did come around. I think once he realized there was food involved, um, he, he gave it a second chance and I did see him eventually <laughs> eventually get curious <laughs> but initially scared and there he goes actually Steven is I, I feel like I didn't get enough footage of this because somehow Steven has picked his 100% clean <laughs> um, he seems to be the most effective hamster at getting all the seeds off of this thing and I don't know what his secret is but um, his is like totally demolished while the other hamsters all have uh, a little bit left that they're still working on And here is little Sophia, the tiny Rabrowski. Um, she seemed pretty interested in this, uh, so but you can see it's also quite slippery for her. I think Steven, it worked out a little better. I, I sort of put it under his coconut fiber and that helped him, I think, have a little more grip. For Sophia, I gave her that little rainbow so she could push against that rainbow bridge or climb on top of it. Um, but uh, I did eventually add some of those nail strips for her too, just so it wasn't quite so difficult because um, it does get a little slippery for her. <laughs> and she ends up just like sitting under, <laughs> under it. It's really funny. So all of my hamsters are now about a year and a half old. Um, <laughs> that was <laughs> kind of silly planning on my part, but <laughs> um, it's been really interesting to see how they just age differently and have different needs. I think you can tell from this video that Sophia is starting to show her age a little bit. Um, her fur is just like a little bit, a little bit scraggly looking. I don't have, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, she used to just like look so soft and fluffy and now she looks a little bit like, <laughs> like she needs a sand bath, but um, she definitely has lots of sand bath. Um, that is not the problem um, but she is she is starting to get a little older and um, the nice thing is she's also kind of mellowing out she used to be very cage aggressive um, and so she would kind of like if you put your hand in her cage uh, she would come up and attack you um, and you know it's a small attack she's got a tiny little mouth but but sharp little teeth I will say <laughs> um, they didn't usually break skin but they could if she felt so inclined um, but the interesting thing is now she's, she's kind of mellowed out a bit and maybe this also has to do with us just handling her and interacting with her more. But um, now, you know, if I see her out and about, I can reach in and, and give her a little back massage and she just sits there and closes her eyes and seems to enjoy it. So um, it's kind of sweet to move into this new phase of her life where she's just like a little bit more chilled out. Um, she's a little like less energetic and sometimes the energetic side comes out like I think you can see in this video <laughs> she spends a lot of time working on that toilet paper roll that's like the young Sophia <laughs> um, but I also like this sort of this more chill little older Sophia it's really kind of fun to to get to experience the breadth of their personalities and um, you know and be there for them as they they get older um, but I'm I think Sophia's still, you know, she's still kicking. I think she's got <laughs> she's got some time left, but um, but it is just interesting to see <laughs> how they change or don't change. <laughs> Thank you. 
So on that note, I think I will leave you for today with these videos of the original Boredom Breakers without the, um, the string attached. <laughs> but I hope this has been informative or idea inspiring. Um, I think that the thing about hamsters is I find and what I enjoy is that I have to constantly be creative and problem solving and trying to figure out how to uh, fulfill their needs, which can be constantly changing depending on health and age and various different things. Uh, so I feel like it's sort of the joy and also the challenge. Um, sometimes I think joys and challenges come together, <laughs> right? So, um, so I hope this was helpful to all of you out there. And uh, I would love to hear from you if you've done something like this. I'm honestly not sure where I got the idea to put, to make a hanging boredom breaker. I know that they exist, so I'm sure that it wasn't mine alone, but I, I can't um, specify where it came from particularly, but um, but if you've done anything similar, I'd love to hear from you um, or if you have some interesting ideas of how you continue to give your hamsters new and fun challenges, um, please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. All right, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!